always want a bad boy, they make me feel good. If you're going to have a midlife crisis, folks, this is the midlife crisis that you really want. This, of course, is the Harley Davidson CVO Street Glide. You're watching Visor Down, and this is our review of Harley's biggest update to its most prestigious model in a very, very long time. So this bike has been known about for quite a while now. We've seen all the spec sheets, and we've seen the presentations and the B-roll riding footage that Harley have sent through, but this was my first chance to really swing a leg over the CVO and have a little go on it. And it has been massively updated. Everything about it is basically new. I think Harley have told me that the only things that carry over from the previous models is the swing arm and the frame of the bike. Pretty much every other element of the bike has been gone through, updated, tweaked, reworked or re-engineered. So this isn't really a specs video. We've already done one of those on Visor Down. So if you want to go and check that out on our channel, we'll put a link to it just up here so you can click on that and be taken through all of the specs and technical details and everything that's new with the new model. This really is just a review of how it rides, how it handles, what the new engine's like and what the updated electronics and infotainment system is all about. So I'm going to start off really with the engine because that's always a big part of any of these big Grand American tourers from Harley Davidson. The engine is a real focal point for the bike and that's still the case with the new 121 VVT power plant that Harley have dropped into the new CVO models. It still looks very much like the old generation bikes but you, the only real clue to the VVT being it fitted to them is the right hand side of the engine where you've got that little cover with the VVT logo on it. So for all intents and purposes you wouldn't really know. You would know when you ride it though because the VVT it does give more power and it does give more torque. What it does do is it massively improves the rideability of the new engine and not just that the emissions as well have been cleaned up but the thing you'll notice is that rideability so the low speed tractability is much better than it was with the old bikes it just feels a bit more refined and a little bit smoother and when you get nearer the top end of the power band and the, the rev range on this bike it doesn't run out of puff quite so quickly as the older bikes did They've also smartened up the engine as well, so it's slightly less vibey than I seem to remember the CVOs and the street glides and the road glides being before. So it's a much smoother and easier to ride and a, generally a nicer place to be. What hasn't changed though is it is still unmistakably one of Harley's big bore V-twins. It's still got that sort of character to it, it's still got that grunty low-end delivery, but what, what you've got now is you've got a nicer mid-range tractability zone where you can just really use the extra grunt and the extra power of the new motor. Another massive change for this one is the way that this bike handles. Now, I said earlier on that the frame and the swing arm are the only items that were carried over from the previous model of bikes, and that might lead you to believe that the handling is going to be just the same as the previous CVOs and those large capacity heavyweight tourers from Harley Davidson, but that's not the case. The main things that Harley have done for this model is they've made it lighter and they've updated all of the suspension systems. So it's not massively lighter, it's about 15 or 16 kilograms lighter than its previous generation sibling, but it does make a big difference. They seem to have trimmed down the weight in all the right places to improve the handling of the bike at low speed and at high speed. The suspension is shower non-adjustable forks at the front and you've got twin shocks at the rear which have been updated as well. So you've got a remote rebound adjuster on the side of the bike so that you can adjust the rebound of the bike on the fly. And overall, the suspension is just transformed. It's less crashy than the previous generation bikes. So it's much smoother over bumps. It's a more comfortable place to be, but it's also got a bit more sort of plushness in it. So it dives a little bit more on the, on the brakes without feeling soft. If the previous bike ever felt a bit jarring, this bike really doesn't. That's one of the main things that I quite like about it is that plushness over bumps and that much improved ride quality. Obviously you can see the forks on this bike as well so Harley have sort of undressed them. The previous bikes had shrouds around them so they looked classical but you couldn't really see what was within and although they were still using top spec suspension systems it was covered up in these steel and aluminium and plastic covers. That's changed and the new front end does look great. It's really it makes it look a little bit sportier and it's perfectly in keeping with that restyled batwing fair that you can see over my shoulder. Another change as well is the move to the Brembo braking system. Now, Harley have actually always used Brembo brakes on these models for quite a long time. But what you can do now is you can see that they're Brembo, they're updated, they're monoblock four piston calipers. So they're a much more modern and refined unit with lots more power and a much nicer lever feel. 
Well, we're talking about lever feel as well. They've also lightened up the clutch on the latest model. It's not quite so heavy as it used to be on the previous bikes. And other changes have been made in the gearbox. So they've smartened up the transmission so that when you first kick the bike into gear from neutral, you don't get that big head bobbing thwack that you used to get when it used to click into first gear. There's still quite a big clunk there, but it's definitely not as noticeable as it was before. And that's one of the things that I think Harley have tried to do for these bikes. I think they've just tried to make them easier to accept for people who aren't Harley Davidson aficionados. If you're a Harley fan, that big thwack when you put it into first gear is just one of those things that comes with owning a bike like this. But if you're new to the brand, it might be something that you did find a little bit unnerving. And they have changed that on this model. The real biggest change that you will feel when you ride the new CVO Street Glide or even the Road Glide though is the way that they handle because it's something that I noticed when I first got on the bike within 50 yards of pulling out of Harley Davidson's HQ in Oxford was just how much the handling had improved and especially at low speed. It's just easier to control, the steering's much lighter. So the, the old bikes, the old CVOs, you were slowing down to a stop and it almost felt like the bikes had got sort of like a stall speed where you go so slowly it just introduces a bit of instability into the front end and the bars would sort of not wobble in your hands but you'd have to move them from side to side to keep the thing upright that's all gone and that's partly down to the weight being probably made a little bit lower but also it being reduced when you do get out on the open road it still feels like a big bike i mean they did shave some weight out of this but it is only around 15 or 16 kilograms but the suspension changes that harley davidson have introduced for the new cvo do make it a very sweet handling bike when you're out on the open road whether that's one up two up or two up with luggage as i've been testing it all in all it's a good story i mean it's very vibe free this bike there isn't too much vibration through the pegs the seat or the uh, handlebars and the seat comfort and ergonomics with the feet forward design and the running boards that you get as standard on the cvo model is really very good there is a, a little air vent mounted into the top of the batwing fairing that you can adjust so it's either directing cool air at your face if it's a hot day or it's sending it over the top of your head if it's a cooler day i did notice there was a little bit of buffering when i had it on its highest setting i sort of found that the best way to combat the buffering when i was on the motorway was to close the vent altogether and not have any air coming up over the screen and just send it all up over i would say though if you're any taller than me you might want to look at the accessory screen that might give you a little bit more lift on the screens just so that your head is in a nice little sealed bubble of dry air it also absolutely teamed it down with rain on the way back and i've got to say that the the design of the back wing fairing kept my arms dry it wasn't sending water up my sleeves or anything like that and there's even these little uh winglets on the edge of each of the forks which you can sort of direct so you can either send the air around you or you can turn them in and it will direct a bit of cooling air towards your legs if it is a hot day for instance so there's some nice touches there and they are all standard on this cvo model so another big change for the model is that infotainment system it is absolutely massive it's got everything that you need to know it's got apple carplay built in you've got an fm radio you've got a dab radio and you've got navigation as well that you can even access without having a bluetooth headset or the apple carplay hooked up but the best way for me to show you this is probably to do it while we're on the bike so I wanted to just talk about the technology on this bike because that's one thing that Harley have done is that massively increased the amount of technology that you get. And aside from the new technology that's down beneath me in the engine, the VBT system and the advanced traction control and ABS and all that kind of stuff, there's a lot of big changes up here. Namely, this one. This all new TFT um, infotainment system as Harley love to call it because uh, yay America um, but it is very very clear and easy to use it's very nicely laid out yes I do need to put some fuel in yeah it's, it's super super duper easy to use it is touchscreen and as you will see once it already once it gets booted up you can actually use it in sort of thick winter gloves and either these sort of sporty leather gloves that I've got on today so the options are really you can hook it up to your Bluetooth uh, to your phone and it will play music off your phone go back to the menus um, you can go into the motorcycle settings and you can lock the bike and turn the infotainment system off all together there you've got your settings up here which you can enter which has got all your apparently Shakira wanted to say hello uh, you've got your device manager you've got your, your display settings as well you've got system settings your rider modes that you can go in there and adjust so you've got all of your standard road sport and then you've got rain as well you've also got your custom maps that you can go in there and adjust and play with so a lot to do there one great thing about this bike that i really really like is that it's got the bluetooth connectivity 
but you don't need a Bluetooth headset to access some of the settings. On some other bikes, Hondas, uh, for instance, you will have to have a, um, a Bluetooth headset to be able to use navigation. Not on the Harley though, because it's all built in. So there is a, a navigation system built in, which is very easy to use. Like I said, you can use it all in gloves, you can set your favorites, and you don't need a full address um, to go to a destination. You just need to know the postcode, and you can pop it in there and it will take you wherever you need to go likewise you can also just put in the name of the city and it will just take you to the city all very very good another thing for this one the cvo's get the top spec stereo system so this is a rockford fosgate stereo i've been told that these are 150 watts a speaker and you get four of them so you get two mounted in the panniers there and you also get the two mounted in the uh, the lovely batwing fairing. So there we have it. It is the Harley Davidson CVO Street Glide. It's really a story that started in I think it was 1969 with the original CVO first ever CVO model, which stands for Custom Vehicle Operations. And CVO for me really has sort of grown from there. It stopped being just a special bike that Harley Davidson make, and it's almost become its own sort of brand in its own right. And this is it really the biggest update that we've seen since I think. I think it's project rushmore when the cvo models moved over to the milwaukee 8 engine but even then when they did that there weren't huge changes to be made to the rest of the bike it really was a power plant update and some extra bits and bobs and styling this though is thoroughly all new totally changed and revised and improved in almost every single way and when you look at the pricing of this bike compared to the previous cvo models there's probably only a thousand or fifteen hundred pounds between the two so you're getting the new styling the new engine the new technology and the new handling and dynamics for about 1500 quid more than the previous bikes if you want to learn any more about the cvos we've got editorial write-ups on the visor down website or get yourself over to the harley uk website and don't forget if you've liked that review please don't forget to hit like and subscribe so you can stay up to date with all of visor down's latest videos and for all the latest news reviews and motorcycle features get yourself over to visordown.com